the e-cell enables us to connect most anything um, over ethernet. So here's an e-cell and, and here is the ethernet connection. Hello and welcome to Embedded Toolbox, a video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And last time on Embedded Toolbox, we had on Daniel Quant of Multitech to talk about ways that you can transform the education sector through connectivity. How are you doing, Daniel? Yeah, good, Brandon. Thanks for inviting us back. Um, so we had a USB dongle last time and showed how you could extend these educational use cases now that so many uh, individuals are forced into these remote learning scenarios. But there are also obviously use cases where you need, need a little bit more scalability, maybe a little bit broader coverage area, maybe a little bit more uh, enterprise scale management, enterprise type management uh, for those infrastructure deployments. The, uh, the microcell USB modem, it's a great one for one attachment. We, we connect them to industrial systems and also to laptops and of course students on Chromebooks uh, doing remote learning. But it's very much a one-to-one -one connection. The e-cell enables us to connect most anything um, over ethernet. So here's an e-cell and, and here is the ethernet connection and over here is the antennas that make the connection to the CBRS network. So we can connect most anything over Ethernet through this product. It essentially becomes transparent to the, uh, the device that's connected to it. And so imagine a Wi-Fi access point. Instead of doing a one-to-one -one connection into the Chromebook managed by the school district, now we can have a connection directly into an enterprise-grade Wi-Fi access point that enables the school district to be able to offer connectivity to perhaps a number of different apartments and families within a, um, a multi-dwelling building. Um, all of this managed in a very professional way using established uh, enterprise protocols and, and services. Uh, the eCell enables us to be able to now place that Wi-Fi access point anywhere in that building. We can always find power, but you can't often find fiber or DSL uh, backhaul. So now with, with the agility of the eCell, we can place that Wi-Fi access point anywhere in that building that gives us the coverage that we need to cover perhaps multiple families in, in a larger building. That's great. So can you walk us through really quickly some of the, the high level features of the eCell and how it would be, be deployed in a network top, topology like we're suggesting today? So the eCell, as I highlighted, quite a simple product, has device management, from our device HQ platform. That's really important because the school district needs to obviously manage a fleet of these devices remotely. Um, it has a gigabit ethernet connection, so it can take whatever data performance the CBRS network can throw at it. And, um, and, and it has good temp range and, and, and easily plugged into uh, a mains outlet. So it's a CAT12 modem and, and it's supporting CBRS uh, ongo. The way that we've connected it up with, um, with the Wi-Fi access point is we've, we've got a computer um, using Wi-Fi, perhaps like you're using right now, connected to a Ruckus R310 enterprise grade Wi-Fi AP. Um, and then we're using the ethernet connection to then connect that directly to the e-cell. As I said, the e-cell looks pretty transparent um, to the access point. It doesn't know that it's over a wireless connection. It just thinks that it's connected on its uh, ethernet port. And then the e-cell is connected to uh, a CBRS um, small cell base station. And, and that's connected to a core network hosted in the cloud, which is how we're then getting access to the internet. So imagine the core network being in the school district, perhaps in their IT department and, and, and environment. And then imagine the CBSDs located around the school and, and the school district. And, and then imagine the e-cell connected to a Wi-Fi access point in say a multi-dwelling building. That's great. Well, the proof's in the pudding, Daniel. Can you show us that this uh, topology would actually work? Yeah, sure. So you would set up the equipment as we just described, go into a command window, IP config, there you go. 
no IP address is at all. We're going to go log on to this Wi-Fi access point. I named it Thelma. Um, and now let's run the IP config again. Now we've got an IP address, 192.168.2.101. So that's great. Um, I know um, that the Wi-Fi access point is 192.168.2.2 and that the e-cell is 2.1. So I've just pinged them here. They're there. We can, we can hit them up now with a, a web browser. So using Microsoft Edge uh, web browser here, we open it up. And as soon as it comes up, we type in 192.168.2.2 for the Ruckus R310 Wi-Fi access point. And up comes the UI in order to log in. So here, here I am logging in with my username and password. And immediately we see a nice control dashboard of everything that's going on. Um, we can see here when we click on internet that we're connected. Um, we're 2.2. Our gateway is 2.1 and that happens to be our DNS as well and, and we're connected so it's all good. Here's our access point, Belma, so there's been a little bit of activity here as we've uh, started to log in and, and here's the laptop, my laptop, Dan's laptop and, um, and it's address 101 which if we go to my laptop here and type in IP config again, sure enough that's our IP address so that's us. Um, where we're now logged into the access point and the access point recognizes that. Um, if we go into the IP settings, um, we've set up the IP address of this unit manually and we've told it the address of the e-cell and we've turned off the DHCP server because it's the e-cell that's going to give out the addresses here. The, the Wi-Fi um, access point is, is, is generating those IP addresses directly from the DHCP in, in the e-cell here. And sure enough, we're connected to the, the um, um, cloud EPC, which is that 10.29 IP address. Um, and when we look at uh, the LAN here, again, we can see that my computer 101 is the only device on this network at the moment. So let's have a little look at the uh, networking in a bit more detail here. Here we start to see a lot more parameters about how we're setting up the network, names that we're calling the network, um, and we've got a NAT loop. So this is super important. We're not going to get those IP addresses coming through unless we turn the NAT loop back on. And here's some credentials for Device HQ. It enables me to take ownership of this in multi-text device HQ remote device management platform. So let's just hit up device HQ here and um, username, password. This is in the cloud, uh, on, on, in the internet. So this is not hosted in any of uh, the devices in my network here. This is a, a cloud hosted device management platform. So warning message to hackers there. And, and you can see immediately where the location of my device is. It's located in the Twin Cities, uh, which is where Multitech is, is based. And it's where our US-based manufacturing is located. Um, here we have a list of all the devices in my account. One of them um, is this eCell product. So let's uh, click on this. And again, it shows you a location and it shows you various analytics around IP addresses, signal performance, uptime, um, and, and throughput and what have you. And previously, I've requested from this device some log files in order to really understand a number of the things it's setting up, uh, whether there are any problems or issues. And so now I've just downloaded those log files that came in um, last time the unit checked in. And, and here's one of the files. Uh, it's showing how it booted up, started up, all the sequence of events that it went through to ultimately connect to device HQ. Now we're connected from our laptop to our Ruckus Enterprise Wi-Fi access point to our resale into the internet. We're now ready to do a speed test and, and see what kind of connectivity that we've got. So we open up a web browser 
type in speedtest.net. And let's go. Let's uh, see what kind of performance we've got here from our cloud hosted network down into my local CBSD, my local base station. And as we connect, we have a, um, a ping of 84 milliseconds. That's because our, our EPC is cloud hosted. It's not on-prem. Um, but despite that, we're getting a pretty good throughput there, 50 megabit per second um, on the downlink. And here we come in with the uplink, perhaps a little bit of congestion uh, as we go back into uh, the, net, the network and the internet side here. Typically, um, the e-cell can obtain 15 to 20 megabits per second on the uplink. And so here you go. We've recorded 50 meg on the downlink, 5 meg on the uplink. We showed you doing some monitoring and pulling log files, but Device HQ is obviously a remote monitoring and management platform, which could be very useful to a school district who's trying to manage many, many devices in a given area. What are some of the value props of Device HQ platform? Yeah, absolutely, Brandon. If you're going to manage a fleet of devices, those devices absolutely need to be digitally native. And by that, I mean that you don't just buy uh, a, a router or a bridge, you buy a bridge that comes with a service, a service that enables you to be able to see how that device is performing and um, provide you alarms if, if things don't go the way that you want them to, um, to provide you secure activation and provisioning, lifecycle management, be able to download custom parameter and config files that set those devices up the way that you want. A little bit like um, in, in perhaps a call center where everybody's computer has an image, right? Do a similar approach. And of course, firmware updates for security and, and additional features. Device HQ comes with your capital investment of an e-cell and our routers and our gateways. And that gives you lifelong access to device management, uh, firmware updates, and of course you get support for the life of your asset too, all capitalized in your purchase. So my second question had to do with the fact that today we saw uh, Ruckus uh, wireless uh, access point along with the e-cell. So what are some of the advantages and use cases of using both of those uh, pieces of infrastructure? And then are there ways that you can consolidate them? If you want best in class enterprise router, and you want the agility to be able to put that anywhere in a building, then this is a perfect combination. Agility with the e-cell by calling over CBRS and a quality Wi-Fi access point that you, you may already have um, in that location servicing those dwellings um, or, or apartment complexes. Uh, of course, there are situations where you perhaps want that all in one unit. Um, imagine a, a vehicle, for example, it could be a school bus, but it could also be a commercial vehicle in, um, in, in an oil field or a construction site. And in an environment like that, you need to be able to connect to the, uh, the, the power system of the vehicle, which is you know, maybe 24 volts, um, might not be quite as simple as, as what you plug into a, a power outlet in a, in a building. And of course, you don't want to have lots of different bits of equipment and wiring everywhere. So a one box solution perhaps suits that a little bit better. And, and that's exactly what our RCEL 600 does. It's an industrial grade industrial router and, uh, and it has multiple ports on it, ethernet, serial, USB, and it also has Wi-Fi. All of that with an LTE CAT12 CBRS backhaul. Very interesting. So interesting, in fact, that I think we might be taking a look at the RSL and those types of use cases next time. But until then, Daniel, where should our viewers go to find out more information about CBRS on go and what Multitech is offering in the remote learning space? www.multitech.com.